G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. This is video two on a multi-part series that covers modeling for animation. In this video, we're going to spend some time blocking out the initial forms of the arms, legs, and torso. So with that brief intro out of the way, let's jump right in, shall we? All right, so we're just going to start off with um, a brand new file. Um, we could probably keep the cube, keep the light, keep the um, the uh, the camera. So we're just going to uh, move that into their own little collection because we can use that in the future for um, you know render previews, um, that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to move those into place, and it's all good to get organization up and running as soon as possible. So I'm just going to hide those for now, and I'll hide this collection as well, call it Geo. And turn that off for now. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring in some reference images, um, orthographic images for us to uh, trace basically for our early blocking. To do that, we're just going to add an empty to our um, scene and select image. All right, make sure that that's centered to the, to the world space as well. We're going to add a uh, image to that um, empty. So we we'll just go to our resource folder. All right, so we got my little image here. And you might be wondering why I'm using an empty instead of like a background image plane in the, um, the viewport settings. So you can actually add background images in the viewport. Um, I personally don't really like doing that because uh, I like the flexibility of being able to just quickly move things around without really worrying about it. So I have my image here and I want to kind of get it up until to the right scale first. So we talked about that in the last video. So I want to make sure the scale is up, up to scratch um, the moment I start modeling with this character. So let's get a quick, let's bring back our little cube just as an example. So our cube is at the moment two meters squared so this character, I want to be around um, yeah, 1.55 meters tall, something like that, maybe 1.6 meters tall. So I'm just going to squish this down until I get around that point in my dimensions. And that will give me a good idea of what scale this character will need to be. So I can sort of line up the top of this skull with um, the top of this uh, cube basically. So just scale it up. You can also scale it on the empty as well. So if I click on this and you go to size, without affecting the scale, you can actually affect the size as well. So just bringing that up to place. So we're starting to get there. And you can also bring it out in front as well, so you can just see it overlap in the empty settings. So now she's a little bit too tall. Actually, no, that's about right. That's about the right height. So I'm just gonna line up the bottom of the foot there with my front view. And then I'm just gonna pull that back. Actually, I'm gonna duplicate that first. Pull that aside for now. And then I'm gonna pull the first one back for my front view. And then I'm gonna rotate the second one for my side view. So when I go to side view, I just line up the center of my world with this character, with this one, and then move that to the side there. So now I have a nice clean front and side view. And if I want to sort of align um, my, uh, realign things so it's a bit more centered. So in this case, it could be a little bit off center. Let's have a look. So that's, pr that's actually pretty good. It's pretty centered there. Um, I don't have to worry about going to my viewport settings and all sorts of shit and uh, fixing that up. So uh, yeah, let's get blocking. But before we do all that, let's sort of analyze this image and see what I aim up to do with this early block and how we can save some time uh, as we build out this model uh, without really relying on, you know, too many like fixing ups and, you know, going backtracking and shit like that. So I'm just going to go to my front view, grab my grease pencil. So what I want to do when I'm blocking, because I'm, I'm planning on just uh, modeling out the body at least, the base mesh, rather than sculpting, because I find that when you have an orthographic image like this ready to go, 
there's not much point in just going straight into the sculpting and then just sort of, you know, fiddling around with the brushes and stuff. You end up adding complexity way too quickly and you're better off starting with some sort of base mesh to work with. So, but the base mesh um, can be the basis for your retopo as well. So we may as well block out um, some good edge loops uh, from the get go. So let's have a look at what we can do. So with that in mind, let's uh, grab our brush and analyze this image. All right, let's analyze this uh, image and see how we can save some time by being conscious of where we place our extrusions and edge loops. So what I want to do with this uh, model from the get go is establish my major points of articulation as I build out the base mesh. So my major points of articulation are the shoulders, the uh, elbows, the knees and the crotch area. So the hips basically. So from here to here, the sort of bikini line where the legs sort of uh, meet the hips. So the hips are also a major point of articulation in terms of the movement of the, the legs going back and forward or whatever. So I want to establish those as early as possible in the early blocking stage. So what would that look like as I um, draw, uh, work out our edge loops? So it would probably look something like this. So one, we need to get that sh the curves in the shoulder. We want to get an edge loop that kind of does this. Goes sort of like this, so sort of like wraps around the chest. So we want to get an edge loop that kind of does this. Around the neck. We want to get um, some loops in here and we can establish that, that compression and elongation that I talked about in the previous video as early as possible as well. So here as well. So what we'd end up doing is getting something like this in the center. And then we want to get the uh, bikini line up and running as well. So we want to get, uh, we want to have a sort of edge loop that kind of goes, or the break of edge loops that go sort of like that. So we have um, edge loops that come down like this, but then we have rot fuck. We have edge loops that kind of go from the bottom of our uh, the crotch up to sort of mold with the hips. And then they sort of travel around the back. So what we'd end up having is sort of like a break in the elbow like this in terms of topology. As we get uh, that compression and elongation in there, like so. We have the same thing here. In its simplest form, we'd have something like this that goes in like that. And then these spans go down like so along the leg. And the hip joint or the hip uh, edge flow would be something similar to this where you have uh, kind of goes up and then it can either wrap around the butt and go back down or it can wrap around and go around the back like so. So that's basically uh, how we're gonna work out the uh, overall flow of this of this object. So what you would have here is for the shoulders, you'd have edge loops that kind of go around the neck, like so. And then there'd be some sort of break here for the um, arm as they travel down the arm, like so. <clears throat> Um, with the face, we're not going to worry about too much because this is the only part really that we're going to really sculpt properly. Once we get the base mesh of our body up and running here, we can sculpt on with a multi-res or uh, with a sort of proxy mesh and then project, reproject our um, base mesh onto that. But for the face, because it's far more complex, we're going to actually sculpt out this face um, initially and then retopo on top. But 
What we're gonna try and establish um, overall in the long term is some loops that go around the eye like so. We're gonna have at least one loop that goes around like a little mask, like so. And then they'll break off there somewhere. And then we're gonna have a span, a center line span that goes through there, like here and like here. And for the uh, mouth, we're just gonna have loops that go around like so. And then at least one or two spans that go around over the nose and past the mouth. <clears throat> because that's sort of representing that nasolabial uh, crease as she moves her mouth and smiles and talks and all sorts of shit. And then we'll probably have some, uh, just some uh, grid line mesh down there. So basically that's how we're gonna approach overall our, um, our, our model today. All right, with that in mind, let's, uh, let's jump in. I'm going to uh, reduce the opacity on this character as well. <clears throat> Bring it down to about, I don't know, 20%. Just so we have something or 10%. Just so we have, um, you know, some transparency above our model so we can just work without worrying about it. And then I'm just going to lock off those, um, lock off the selection of those so I can't accidentally fuck around with them. All right, let's bring back our little cube. I'm gonna recenter that for now. And then I'm just gonna go into my edit mode, add an edge loop. Actually, you can actually do it even simpler. I'm just gonna grab this face. And then I'm going to shift, uh, control, move, control, and then click and move that center, um, that face into the center line and then delete that middle face. And this actual little cube is gonna become the basis of our body as we start adding extrusions and stuff like that. So yeah, let's add a mirror modifier to that, that cube. And we're gonna turn on clipping. And the cool thing about clipping is basically if you um, overextend your verts like this, they will just basically merge into the center and not be a pain. So like you'll always get a nice clean center line of verts down the middle of the, um, down the middle of the body. So you're not going to get like overlapping verts or anything like that. Like you would get in other software if you're not being careful. So that's really, really cool. All right. So Let's just scale down this uh, little cube in edit mode now. We're just gonna give it down to the sort of parameters of our body. Just very quickly, just get a very simple blocking going on. So starting from the chest, like so. I'm just gonna line up those initial verts with the body. So now we know that the chest is sort of sitting in the front view like so. So I'm just gonna get that in, gonna line up her, her body and I'm, I'm also having to in initially sort of imagine what this character is going to be like without clothes and where those where that that skin would sit on top underneath those clothes because this character is also going to be changing her clothing um in my film as well so i got to be careful about where i place um you know where i place the underlying um uh physiology of this character all right, so I'm just going to actually leave that down there for now, and then we'll clean up that after the fact. All right, cool. And now we're just basically going to end up extruding things. And uh, make sure that when you're um, playing with your initial shapes that you've got your scale uh, applied, because you'll get uh, weird transforms if you don't um, have a uniform scale applied in your initial um, model. Because then you will get, like, uh, if you're trying to extrude or um, do insets or anything like that, you're going to get uh, a lot of issues. All right, so I'm just gonna add a center line to begin with as well. So I can bring down those shoulders. So as you can see, I'm already starting to block out um, the, 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 the key principles I have uh, about modeling characters into this initial base mesh. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, I definitely recommend you check it out. So we've got our basic sort of body for our upper chest. And now I'm basically just gonna start extruding out. So, I'm 
And you can see here, we're getting to that part of the body where I kind of have to start thinking about um, where I'm gonna place um, this geometry. So I'm actually gonna grab the hips. And as you can see, I've got uh, this merging issue here again because I have clipping turned on. So I can actually fix that by um, either turning off clipping and see if it's merged. Turn off the clipping temporarily and just remove those um, overlapping verts. So if you scale too much in the center line, you'll get that clipping issue. So I'm just gonna keep that center line up and running and then turn on clipping again. So I'm just gonna sort of estimate where that hip will sit like so. And just sort of block out that center line a little bit and it's, it's best to start simple don't go with too many too much geometry from the beginning so just your basic shapes we're basically it is blocking after all so don't overdo it so i'm just playing with the original initial shapes that i have I'm only basically using one tool at the moment. I'm just using the extrude tool and the move tool uh, to get this initial block going. All right. All right, so we got our body in there. Like so. And now let's have a look and see how that's looking. So right now it's looking a little bit too uh, empty there. So I'm going to get that initial loop around the uh, chest going. So as you can see, if I add that loop now, just from that uh, these basic shapes, I can still add a loop going around her chest. So I'm going to add a single loop. I'm going to start filling out um, the, the anatomy of that body a little bit further. So here the back is looking a little bit too flat. So I'm just going to bring that up like so. <clears throat> All right. We can also add a, uh, right now, we have to add a center line down the middle of the body as well. So we can add one just going straight down the middle like so. And this will be form the basis of our arm going forward as well. So let's bring up this part to sort of settle the neck joint So where the neck meets, we're just gonna flatten that area out a little bit, just so we know that it's gonna be the neck, the neckline. And when I talk about center line, it's always good to have at least some sort of a consistent center line down the, the side of the body as well, as well as the front, because you get uh, you'll get a much cleaner, um, you'll be able to manage your model a little bit better as well overall doing that as well. All right then, so going forward, let's uh, try and get this neck up and running. So we're just gonna select these two faces on the top here. And then it's gonna drag out sort of a sort of spheric, uh, um, circular shape out of that neck. Just to get some semblance of consistency there in the neck. Get that center line up. And then I'm just going to extrude out up the neck for the time being. So we have our neck up and running, very simple. And now we're getting those nice loops going on there and we can sort of adjust these verts as needed. And you wanna try and keep your um, edge flow looking pretty clean as well. Just keeping those um, you know, the consistency of the lines, or uh, the edges as clean as possible. All right, so we've blocked out our neck. So now we're onto the um, the arms and the, um, the legs. So let's start with the arms. So you may think, oh shit, let's uh, just extrude out uh, an arm like this and we'll get everything we need, done. Uh, not quite. What we need to do is we want to preserve volume on the top of our shoulder here 
and reduce volume under the arm. So we want to actually separate these faces or these edges forward and then pull down um, these uh, faces to get the arm extrusion that we want. So let me demonstrate. I'm just gonna grab this vert and push V on my keyboard and pull that up to separate it and then pull it out like so. So we get a nice clean edge flow around the top of the shoulder. I'm then going to pull down this vert so we get something like this going on for our uh, middle of the, uh, for our, um, for our arm, basically our arm hole, if you want to call it anything else. But we have one extra issue. So if I were to extrude out an arm now, like this, we're going to get one, uh, a, a six pole, we're going to get a star in the middle of this arm. So we don't want that on either side. So we need to do one extra thing with this um, area. And that is add a little bit of extra geometry in the middle between our arms to uh, reduce the likelihood of that happening. So I'm gonna grab these edges here and just uh, separate with V again and pull those up like so. like this and then I'm just going to fill that back in so I'm going to fill that back like so and like so and then I'm going to add an extra edge loop there and an extra edge loop there so now we have a nice um, opening for our arm and we have uh, eight at the moment we have eight edges for that to play with uh, when we extrude out that arm so before we do that, I'm going to turn on, make sure I, I have this tool turned on. It's called Loop Tools. So jump into add-ons, type in Loop Tools. Loop Tools. And just turn that on because it gives you some extra features that uh, are a total lifesaver in, um, in Blender. So if you go to Tools, or so go to Edit, uh, View. Oh, fuck, where are they? Loop Tools. Item, view, tool, tool, options, no, workspace, no, edit, yes. In the edit tab, sorry. Uh, go to the loop tools and we can circularize this selection so we get a nice circular arm hole, basically. But before we do that, I'm gonna add two more loops, I think. Let's see, one, two, one, two. So we have 12 edges. And this is really important when it comes to making our hand because with 12 edges or with an arm that has 12 verts, we can easily create a hand that a seamlessly joins with our arm. Um, and I'll explain that later, but I'm trying to be very technical with the way I block out this character because trust me, by being technical like this, you really be able to save time and grief with um, how we do things. So yeah, let's circularize this thing. And you can see it's kind of fucked up our blocking a little bit, but we just have to scale that down, pull it out. And now we can just sort of just squish it down a little bit. And this will look a lot cleaner once we add more geometry, so don't worry. And you can see we've got a little bit of uh, stretching going on, so we're just going to redistribute that. So we want to keep the top of the circle relatively linear with the rest here. And just scale that up a little bit. And what I want to do is, with this um, arm, basically um, at this point in time, the arms are too close to the body in this sketch. So I want to just sort of trace the arm with, as a separate object to get the scale of the arm right and then reattach it to the body. So for now, I'm just going to extrude out just another loop like this. And then I'm going to separate it using, uh, just separate it, with the, separate it from the rest of the mesh temporarily. So I'm going to push set, separate. Uh, we're just going to split the selection. So that's now separate. Okay. And temporarily, I'm just going to select everything in this center line here, this mesh and push hide. And just working with this loop, I'm going to line up this loop with my arm. 
and block out that arm in very simple terms. So just block out that like so. Going to get that forearm shape in there a little bit there like so. And then just pull in for the wrist. All right, cool. All right, we can add a little bit of mass there as well if you want to add a little bit of uh, variation in the uh, bicep and the tricep. So we got our arm there. Let's just line that up as well with um, our image. And as you can see, with my um, forearm and uh, in my, the front and side view, I'm not quite in sync with the, um, the lining up of our my character, um, but that's fine. Uh, we just have to sort of eyeball it then. But let's just grab these faces here and just sort of rotate that into place. Well, actually, I'm going to keep it straight for now because, um, yeah, it makes sense at the moment to keep it straight because we can put it back into an A pose after the fact and we can be a bit more technical about it. So I'm just going to keep it relatively straight instead of conforming to the um, conforming to the sketch, basically. So I'm going to keep this as long as the scale is good. That's all we need. So I'm just going to add an extra loop here and an extra loop there. And then we'll worry about the um, adding that um, extra geometry at the back of the elbow uh, toward the end of our blocking. Oh, when we get to the next stage of our uh, modeling, which is um, just refining the, the block basically. So we can unhide that. And now what I want to do is just grab this arm and I'm going to actually make it into a T pose for time being. So I'm just going to have it out straight. And what we can do to make sure that everything is um, rotating in the right spot, just put the 3D cursor at, at around the elbow area. So probably around here, go to 3D cursor. Oops. Use the 3D cursor as a reference point for rotation and just bring that out straight like that. And that gives us our arm blocking good to go. And now let's just grab these, um, this connection here. So I'm going to use soft select. Bring down that soft selection a little bit and just sort of line that up like so we can bring that arm in a little bit turn off soft select here i'm going to straighten that out with the scale and then i'm just going to fill in um an edge loop here basically like so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Cool. All right. And the cool thing now is that we can have we have our clean edge loop for our um, upper body, and we can now start to flesh out the rest of the uh, chest and the um, chest and the uh, the torso. So I'm add a few more edge loops like so. And now I'm just going to refine this selection. So. The cool thing as well is that because we got this nice clean topology going on at the moment, I can add an edge loop down the center line here of this mesh here, and it will travel through the body without any sort of spiraling or fuck uppery. So yeah, cool. And this is where we can probably uh, use the sculpting tools to sort of smooth out things. So jump into sculpt mode and then with a really soft brush, just like a super low strength, just tap away a little bit to get the form of our body in into that and because we were the nice thing about this is because we're using the mirror modifier uh, we know that the even if even if we have mirroring turned on in sculpt mode without mirror modifier um, there's no guarantee that you'll get a perfect mirrored uh, sculpt but in mirror mode you can in with the mirror modifier sorry so we got we're basically smoothing out the distribution of those um, faces now to allow us to do some extra sort of uh, volume um, blocking of our body or the character. So I'm not, notice how I'm not really, a, I'm not playing with the arms at the moment. I'm just playing with the body because that's a really important component. We can add a few more edge loops to the neck. And we're getting a very decent block of the body very quickly like so all right let's have a look at the legs 
so what we want to do we want to create that um we want to create that loop right that uh, fancy loop that goes down the legs and we have a, a nice loop that goes along the crotch so this is a very fairly straightforward way of doing things so similar to the arms i want to create some extra geometry down at the bottom of the crotch so you notice how i've so by sculpting it i've kind of it's kind of reduced the distance of this bottom faces so all i'm going to do is basically extrude out a crotch line like so and then i'm going to see about how we can uh, establish that initial loop that goes around the um leg so we can actually do that just by extruding basically so select all those faces and extrude and then i'm just going to bring that in i'm going to smooth that out a little bit with the smooth tool just so we get that loop up and running so straight away we're already establishing the hips quite nicely with this initial loop so we got a loop that goes up and around the hips like so and then we also have let's see How many faces do we have? We have 14 edges. That's okay. We can live with that. Normally, I'd, I'd try and establish a 12 loop uh, leg as well, but it's not as important as the hands in my opinion. So we can get away with that. And we'll probably have to add a second center line to those legs anyway. Um, and I'll explain that later. All right, so let's just extrude out some legs now. So we've got that loop going on. And we're probably going to break this loop uh, for the back because um, once we do the butt, it's going to, we're going to redirect some of these, um, this, some of this direction. But for now, let's just grab these faces that form the initial shape of our body. And basically extrude out those legs. And we can circularize that as well and shrink that down. So we get somewhere along the knees. We're going to sort of rotate that a little bit as well for the knee line and then extrude out again, get in those shins and those calves and extrude once more down for the the feet and the ankles. And make sure you keep looking at the front and the side at the same time to make sure everything is lining up properly. So you can see here that the the, um, the ankles are looking a bit wonky. So we're just gonna re basically just rotate that to fit like so. All right. Can make that a little bit smaller in the knee, and we can add a little bit of more volume into that knee in the Y, like that, and in the front. This help flesh out that shape so we're getting a pretty good blocking of the body in about what 20 minutes half an hour so not bad and now we just got to extrude out the feet so um pretty simple just select those faces for the feet extrude down grab these faces at the back to just flesh out that uh, that heel so this one this one and this one and we're not going to worry too much about this topology at the moment we'll fix it out after the fact all right so we're just gonna 
choose wisely our faces to extrude out the actual structure of the feet. So I'm going to go with these four. Actually, before I do that, I want to establish a center line for my leg. And I think, actually I already got one. So I just got to rotate these a little bit. So I have a clean center line for the leg. So where the center of the knee will sit. So this will be the center line of my leg here. Let's uh, smooth that out and have a look again. Yeah, we can work with what we've got for now. If we have to add an extra a new center line, we can do that after the fact. But right now, this will be fine. So I'm going to select this, these, uh, one, two, three, four, five faces, and eventually I probably have to put a center line down the middle here. So if I add one there. Let's just add it now just to make sure and it'll go right around the body and be a nice clean loop to begin with. So we have a nice center line for the foot. So now we're going to select these six faces. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. And just extrude out. Extrude down, uh, scale down. And just a little bit out further just for the toes and if you plan on having individual toes for your model uh, we'll talk about how we can create those um, that structure as well in the next video add a few loops add a few loops and now we have a pretty good uh, structure for the foot so I might simplify that that loop structure first and just make sure I get the overall structure of the foot looking okay First. So something like that would be fine. I'll smooth that out. Once we sculpt, we can sculpt in some uh, smooth in the sculpting, uh, smooth in the mesh with a little bit of sculpting. So just with these loops, that should be good enough to just do a bit of a sculpt. You can turn on um, wireframe if you like as well. And notice how I haven't put on smooth preview, uh, smooth shading or um, subdivisions yet because. You want to work with as much uh, simplicity as possible. So adding uh, smooth shading um, will not give you the right sort of color, um, information when it comes to where you've placed your um, your verts and your faces and your edges. And having subdivision at this stage will only make life more complicated. So and also slow down your process because it actually takes a performance hit. So just sculpt out this stuff a little bit just using the smooth brush. And that should do for now. We can clean up this part now as well. So what we got, we got a little bit of a problem here. We got um, a loop going around the foot and then terminating at the heel. So, I mean, if you wanted to have like a realistic heel to some degree, this could be a good idea, but I want to make sure the loop goes around the foot totally. So I'm just going to delete these. The bottom of the foot for now. Actually, I'm just going to select these faces first, and then I'm going to do an inset, and then I'm going to delete whatever isn't, what whatever is inside that inserted set of faces. So I'm just going to push inset just a little bit, delete these faces that exist there, and because we have um, uh, an even amount of edges at the bottom here, if I just push Control F and go grid fill. We should get a pretty clean um, grid fill just out of the box, but it doesn't look like it quite works. So I might clean that up manually, just like so. Yep, that looks okay. And then we'll just fill in those with quads. So we're trying to keep, we're still trying to keep that geometry nice and simple. Dead. 
that looks much better. Delete this face. Actually delete both. So now we have a much cleaner uh, set of topology from the beginning with the feet. So the, now that loop is now, you know, staying within the, the, the structure of the foot. We have loops that going around in some part around the body still a little bit, but it's still cleaner than it was before. But the loops around the feet now are much cleaner as well. And the only reason why we're getting a loop going around here is because it's actually going right around the bottom of the base of the foot. So it's not actually a bad thing. because it's not spiraling or anything like that, so that's fine. So as you can see, we've already blocked out most of the body structure. And we can do a few little switch uh, changes here, get those thighs a bit closer in the center. And you can even use sculpting to do this as well. So I'm just gonna bring those in. So I'm gonna bring in this topology first then bring in this topology like so and widen up those thighs a little bit and then we can add a, a few more spans along the thigh and the shin all right so let's just um do a little bit of sculpting again. And this is the cool thing about Blender. You can jump in and out of sculpting really easily. And just smooth out that body. So we just want to make sure that that quad structure is nice and even across the board. And again, I'm not fucking with the arms right now. Because the arms, uh, we have to give it some special treatment. As we get into more uh, detail with the hands. All right, so now we have a bit of a pancake butt going on. There's no mass there, so we need to actually <clears throat> create some extra mass there because there is a lot of stretching going on as 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 a character walks, jumps, and you know moves around. So we got to add that structure as well. But we have a nice base to work from going forward. So that will be what we will be covering in the next video. So we're going to add some volume in the butt. We're going to add her chest. We're going to sort out these uh, elbows and knees. We're going to fix up these feet because if you look at the front, um, you know, they're kind of fucked at the moment. They're a bit too narrow and a bit, uh, a little bit too small. Um, so it, next video is all about adding volume to the body. But even though we haven't really uh, got that volume in there yet, we can still test out this, um, this mesh to see if it's working all right in terms of its topology. And the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is to actually export this out and bring it into a website called Mixima, which is a sort of library of uh, motion capture stuff that lets you project that motion capture onto your own mesh. So let's have a little bit of fun with that before we wrap up and export this out. So to export this, we're gonna select our model. We're gonna to go to file, export, FBX, and then we're going to export this file as an FBX file with uh, selected objects turned on. So we only wanna export the mesh. Um, we're going to have everything else turned on. So we're going to apply all our uh, geometry in terms of modifiers. So that mirror modifier will automatically apply and then just push and then just push export and it's exported. And now let's just go to Mixamo. So we just go to Mixamo.com or just type in Mixamo into your uh, search parameter. Let's go to Mixamo.com. And this is a sort of uh, a company owned by um, Adobe. So you need an Adobe account to log in. So I'm just gonna log into my account. Uh, not now, fuck that off. And it's really easy to use Mixamo. And it's a great way to test out the topology and the um, and the efficiency of your rig. So we have tons of different animations to play with. So let's just upload our own character. We're gonna choose our um, exported file. It'll process that character. 
as you can see we have our mesh ready to go so we just follow the prompts add ourselves our fictional chin add our fictional wrists so just at the edge there our elbows so that's where our elbows are sitting at the moment knees and the groin so that's where the groin is sitting so around that point there and then basically just push next it'll process that for a few minutes and we'll be able to see this little rig in action even though it's just a really simple mesh you'll be able to see how efficient this uh, edge flow is going so far Damn, there we go. <laughs> we can see it working already. If we push next, we can test out some cool animations just with this basic topology. We can get to dance. Ooh, damn. There's some Eddie Gordo shit going on right there, man. We can get it to... Uh... Let's see what else we can do. Use a fax machine. <laughs> And the cool thing about this is that you can actually test to see if the arms are too short or too long. At the moment, they look like they're just about the right length. If we add the hands, they'll probably be the right proportions. And we'll just play with this a little bit more just to see how it's going. So right now, it looks like the shoulders are looking pretty good. The arms are looking pretty good. And you can see the how like we need to add that extra volume in the elbows because we're not getting that right bend. It's looking a little bit spaghetti-like in those corners there. So we're going to add that volume in, in the next video. Same goes with the legs. We can see a little bit of uh, spaghetti night. Like you see, like it's not really that, um, not really maintaining the volume that much. But you can see how efficient this um, setup is already, just with um, this basic topology. And as we flesh this out even more, it's going to get even better. Let's do one more animation. Let's have a look. Ooh, see, look at that. We're getting some really cool deformations already just with this basic mesh. Not bad, eh? And as we get that face in there, we'll get those elbows properly in there, we'll get that butt in there. We're gonna have a really cool mesh. So I'm just gonna ignore this for the rest of the, uh, just gonna ignore this. And you don't have to pay any money for using Mixamo, at least for the base mesh, uh, the base um, software. So just sign up with Adobe account or, or, or an email and just test out your rig. So yeah, next video, we're going to cover that uh, volume issue. We're going to add the butt, uh, we're going to add the breasts, get those elbows up and running, get those uh, knees up and running and fix up those feet. So until then, I'm going to say catches and have fun.